The Federal Aviation Administration manages the safest airspace in the world. By far, bar none. And as with the rest of our economy, new technologies promise to make general aviation even safer. For us in the FAA, the critical work ahead is to engage cooperatively with aviation industry leaders to bring those innovative ideas and technologies to market quickly, safely, and under a fresh, forward-looking regulatory framework. What aviation needs is a really a healthy, vibrant consumer industry. To have that, you need healthy, new, innovative products to keep their attention. To innovate, you need freedom. The more degrees of freedom you have, the more innovation you can bring. So you have to reduce the certification costs in order to inspire companies to do something innovative in the industry. You know, our members are really looking at trying to have access to some of the latest technology of devices that they can bring into the cockpit to bring situational awareness, weather, airbags uh, through the seat belts, any of those kinds of things that are available today on the higher end commercial products. Keeping something the same doesn't mean that it's safer. And doing it the same way that we've always done it in the past won't make the product safer. Part 23, the federal rule defining airworthiness for small airplanes, was originally written in 1965. It has evolved over time, but industry advocates for a complete rewrite to bring it into the 21st century and beyond. Part 23 has been around for a long time, and as technology has evolved over the years, the regulation has changed a lot, but as often happens when you're writing something and rewriting it and adding new changes to it, it becomes very cumbersome and very difficult. The FAA's Aircraft Certification Service is rewriting Part 23 regulations using performance-based requirements in conjunction with consensus-based methods of compliance. This new flexible framework will encourage innovation and help streamline the FAA's general aviation certification process. It will also provide FAA with the agility to address new technologies. I think it's time now that we try to make sure that we have, we're taking full advantage of what we can allow into the system to enhance safety. With Part 23, it'll initially be with new aircraft designs, but it's going to lead the way to how we can now look back at some of the older aircraft that are still in the system and find ways that we can get new safety enhancements into those aircraft to continue to improve the safety record and reduce the number of accidents in general aviation. We're going to have a brand new framework. It's very performance-based, very nimble, very flexible, and that's great for the manufacturers because it means that they are able to take the standard and figure out how best they comply with it. How do they leverage their innovation, their technology to ensure the highest levels of safety? That means how can we look at the data that we have about the system that, as it operates now and how can we use that data to help us really make more informed decisions about where there's risk and what the standard needs to be to assure we're addressing that risk appropriately. Consider the velocity of change. Things are happening much faster than we can keep pace. Moving to performance-based rules gives us the flexibility and agility that we'll need. We'll be able to keep up with new technology. We won't have to rewrite the rules or spend time on special conditions or exemptions. This is our opportunity to become much more efficient and effective. It's really embracing this idea of risk-based management of safety uh, in the airspace and being able to do that in the certification basis as well. Having appropriate levels of oversight and appropriate levels of documentation based on the risk of any individual aircraft. The separation of the, the basic regulations and requirements from the means of compliance allows us to be much more flexible, but as we are able to implement additional industry consensus standards into, uh, into the uh, compliance side of the matrix, we will be able to bring new technologies more quickly to market. I think what we have to do is we have to take advantage of our combined knowledge, the ind industry's knowledge, the FAA's knowledge, and we have to work on efficiency to market because between Part 23 and the ODA rewrites, what we're really promising to do is get safety into the cockpit, into the airframe, into the avionics more quickly. Aviation has always been an industry that has been premised upon working collaboratively with industry. And what we're doing now in Part 23 and in everything else that we're doing is figuring out how we strengthen that collaboration, how we share information across the industry, and how we ensure that we are all working together to keep the system safe, keep it efficient. We each have different experience. We have different understanding. 
we clearly understand our product better, the FAA will understand the industry better, and together we're gonna to come up with a far better product, a better solution. The neat thing for me is that industry and the FAA leadership are all in this, we are all in this together, and if we can get the FAA workforce buy-in to this, we are going to advance safety and we're gonna advance aviation in this nation and globally. Global collaboration on the rewrite is critical. Having different requirements across different countries forces us to, to design things multiple times, to, to document them multiple times. So the efforts to globalize this and get that collaboration up front is critical for its success. So we need to have that international cooperation. And I think it was very good when the FAA started uh, this ARC, uh, rulemaking, part 20, ARC 23 rulemaking committee to invite really all associations around the world and their authorities around the world, and they really did come. Being able to see the industry come together and really put safety first and put the pilot first and the operator first and figure out how to do that in a way that still allowed innovation and technology to advance um, quickly uh, was really an amazing thing. In order to continue as a global leader, we need to be agile enough to keep up with industry's innovative ideas and to set pace for other authorities around the world. Give them some freedom and I think they'll surprise you. Surprise you what they'll do with the discipline, they'll surprise you with the innovation, they'll surprise you with the products. This really is going to take an enormous cultural change to step back and start addressing what are the problems that we're trying to solve for and finding new paths to be able to incorporate solutions for those problems. And, uh, you know, no, no easy task, but there's a lot of great people at the FAA that I, I know can, we can help us get there. What the rewrite gets us is the ability to get new products, new technologies into the marketplace that much more quickly. And that's important because aviation has always been about how do we leverage innovation, how do we leverage technology, all with the goal of making the system as safe as it can possibly be. Together with the FAA, we're gonna make a far better product than we can alone. We have an opportunity to continue to lead this industry, not for the next generation or the next decade, but for generations to come. Collaboration and rulemaking between the FAA and aviation industry leaders here at home and abroad invites innovative technologies into the market to make general aviation safer and more accessible to everyone. These efforts ensure that the FAA will continue to manage the safest airspace in the world. <laughs>